Is he going to see the armory? Or as I like to call it, the armoru? Uh, well, he's definitely not going to see the armory. There's not even a chance. Oh, I thought the army was actually in the main. Excuse me. Uh, uh, so well, immediately we have a push It's out a fusion here. core is why he's not going to see it. I'm sorry. I thought <laughs> was... Oh, he has an armory too. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay. I was like, wait a minute. Am I mad? Why? Uh, so it's actually <laughs> going to be a hell bad push. And guess damn. what, pro gamers? We usually say it doesn't work, but maybe it does because Mario's doing it. I bet you it doesn't. I bet you it doesn't. You're like, yeah. Oh, maybe it does. Well, maybe it doesn't. Hold on, though. He did kill a queen and yeah. some rings. Yeah. Is he gonna get? A, he might get a second queen here, Tasteless. Wow. The best Terran ever in the history of the world by far. Still got. Did one he get queen. the second queen? He no, didn't. He didn't. Too bad. But Tasteless, he did get like eight zerglings, and he also got a queen. Well, losing that one queen will certainly make this battle cruiser a greater threat. Yeah, I guess he had to use some transfusions, but like. Guys. Maybe there's something too burning through the transfusions. I don't know. Yeah, no, there, there, there's definitely a little bit of something to it. Uh, but the Hellbat pushes suck. They're terrible. Yeah, I just don't get it, man. We see them so often. and Maru can't make them work. It just isn't that good, man. I don't get it. Yeah. I'm just, what I'm going to buy a trumpet, and I'm going to bring it in. Every time that there is a Hellbat push, instead of speaking, I'm gonna blow into the trumpet as hard as I can. I think people would probably prefer that at this point. I think because this is such a broken record thing. Because every Hellbat push in GSL in the last three years has failed. All of them. Garbage. Garbage. Just not chases. good, man. All right, targeting down these uh, drones. He did end up um, warping in over a uh, spore crawler. Yeah. But again, you know, this is the the threat of the battle cruiser eight. Drones killed, the Queen's doing damage, but of course the battle cruiser gets away. Yeah. Even though that overlord kind of camouflaged over the trees. Battle cruiser attacks on its own. <laughs> Another armory coming up right what now. What about a second Hellbat push? Oh dude, that is here is the big brain play. This is five head. Well, he's got some some banelings in there, so that's not dodgeable. Uh, Yamato on the way. It is a mech follow-up, and the Spire is coming. So this will be interesting to see from Ragnarok if he goes into Corruptor or he tries the Mutalisk play. And, you know, this is Maru mecking behind this, which is what we tend to see nowadays from the BC play. Yeah. This and Maru, actually... Maru may be the very best at this style here. I mean, it, I don't know if it's oh. his best style, but I think when we see Maru do it, he is the better player out of all the other Terrans. He is very good at mech, yeah. I wonder who's actually the best at it right now. So these mutas have come in here, and look, they've taken out some cyclones, but it seems like the other attacking units have basically bought enough time. It's interesting to me, by the way, that he brought the two BCs home, used the Yamatos on the mutas, and now is going back out. Obviously, you want to send them out so you can teleport them back, but just the fact that that's how he chose to utilize the Yamatos as opposed to on the Queens. Kind of cool. All right, some corruptors being added in right now. So it seems like the mutas were just, it was just like one flock of them to get some damage done. And I think he's, they've done all right. Look at Ragnarok here. He's got really good creep spread. He's up to 94 worker stasis. And he's actually going melee, carapace, baneling speed. That is a different type of choice. Some banes come down here. You know, These mutas come, coming around. Go ahead, Artos. There's there's a lot of different things that we end up seeing against mech and against BC openers. Uh, but, yeah, Ling Bane is a very rare one. There's yeah. been, like, a lot of uh, discussion and arguments back when this was actually very popular as to whether or not this was even usable. And it seems like it was usable, but not maybe the... the it's definitely not the easiest thing to do. Ooh, almost gets that one. And that's interesting. I guess Muta's with a couple Corruptors. Suddenly, the, the Battle Cruisers really have to respect the air threat. Mm -hmm. And now you can basically mass up a pretty strong ground army. And look here. He's going to go for Hydras. Oh, that's Which is an too. interesting move. Hmm. I mean, Hydras are obviously not bad with massive amounts of Lings behind them and Banes. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not, I'm not sure, sure what to think about this composition. But Zerg expands again here at 9 o'clock. Hmm. This is a really interesting game. You're the only one that sees it. I'm the only one that sees the maps <laughs> these ways. So. Oh, he went up to four VCs, by the way. Yeah. 
It used to be this, three, but that's this cool. seems to be the number. Maybe there's a reason, like the corruptors are here now, so you want to throw another one in. Hmm, maybe. I'm not sure. Well, the Yamato's definitely going to continue to give some value. Hellions uh, being pushed back. Blue flame about halfway done. Hive is coming up. Just kind of upgrades all over the place. Oh, just gets that out. Yeah, I mean, he's chipping away at these beauties here. Does do some damage and then manages to save it at the last second. Of course, you could just repair him over here, which is why this is so strong. We're getting such value out of the battle cruisers. Um, I mean, Terran is basically sitting back and powering up. It's going to be time to attack out in a moment, though. He's made like 50 Banes now. Yeah. Over 90 drones against 87 SUVs. This is such an interesting game. I'm really digging this right now. Okay, scans and sees, it's a lot of Banelings. Terran's now taking the base here at uh, 3 o'clock. Zerg is expanding into the Terran's territory in the upper left. I don't know how quickly Morrow's going to realize that, but keep in mind, if Terran just sits and runs the clock and can poke out that top left base, Zerg will run out of uh, funding first. Especially if hmm. Banelings do not trade effectively. Yeah, that's that's a good point. And against mass mech, it doesn't seem like they would. So you might be looking for a tempo victory, but tempo victories are, are weak against slowing it down, like you mentioned. Huh. I think it's time for Ragnarok to shift focus to the entire other side of the map. Like, if you're going to play like this... Oh my god. I don't think this is going to work. No, the, the, I mean, what? there's just so many good units against Banes. And even if you go for the command center, how does this help you? You're like, oh no, it's 400 minerals. So he gets 10 SCVs and a planetary for 50 Banes and whatever so, else died there. This is one of the things where I think the theory is wrong here for Ragnarok. Like when you're way ahead of a Terran and you've got... Like you're like on Nautilus or something, and you have so much of the map that you keep just taking bases, and they have one base they're barely hanging on to. That's when you just throw all your banes on there and go back and suck up more resources. Now I think he's given an actual opportunity yeah. here uh, for Terra to push out here to the bottom, right? Well, I think that this was especially a, a poor choice because Maru basically brought all of his units to bear right there, and then Ragnarok was like, sure, I'll attack in. Uh, there, he had other bases that were literally completely... Like, the leftermost base at 12 has a turret at it. That's its defense. One turret. Like, three Banelings up there would have done as much damage as all 50 down there. So, I think that uh, he's not utilizing his mobility against the immobility of the mech army. And now we're going to have another head-to-head -head fight. Some Vipers can come in here and actually with really nice blinding mm. clouds make these tanks pretty useless. Yeah. And suddenly, kind of an insane victory here for Ragnarok. Keep in mind, Ragnarok still has the upper left. He's not mining from it yet, though. Look at this, having to come out and repair these BCs. The Thors fighting against them as well, the Corruptors. Yeah, so it looks like the Corruptors will be beaten there. Push back. Yeah, quite a loss there. Only three Corruptors get away. Make it, I think he might only be one. Ooh. That, nope. A few more crafters being made now. Transfusions going up. More siege tanks and Hellions on the way. Now, the problem for Terran is that this isn't your normal infantry army. It's not mobile. You can't be dropping everywhere. It's sort of this uh, iron fortress of Terran defense that, I mean, as far as I can tell, I don't know that he has to do much more killing. He does need to take care of this base in the upper left. It doesn't seem like he's actually privy to the information here. It's uh, a Zerg expanding right under his nose. Yeah. Anything he can suck up from that location is very useful. Yeah. That'll go permanently into the coffers for the Zerg and maybe get him some value. But um, I think the fact that this is spotted should be an easy game here for uh, the Terran. Okay. Nice surround here. These Ling's going to get some real value. Just completely wiping yeah, nice. out these Thors. Kind of surprised to even see them out there. A sloppy there. Oh! oh! 22 kills. Oh. You could see Maro really playing the map. I mean, problem is Zerks expand ahead of the uh, the Terran. That's how these games naturally occur. But if the Terran, if there's not that many expansions on this map, and in this case there's not, um, Terran can kind of just sit back and defend, and then eventually Zerg is going to have run out of money on this side of the map. Terran will be mining out the few resources left on his uh, side. 
Look at this, getting as much value as he can, throwing out those Yamatos. And just going to teleport out. Oh, my God. Now, these Battle Cruisers are getting such value. In fact, they're winning that fight, which it's is kind of, kind of funny. Yeah. It's like, oh, I guess this is way It's like money. killing all the va the Vipers, the anti-air, the drones, the Corruptors, and the Hydras. Maybe the Hatchery as well. More Corruptors coming up. Just a handful of these things. Oh, my God. They just did so Look much this. there. Beautifully oh. done. They're still killing all the anti-air. Yeah. He's microing beautifully. Every time it gets low, he just pulls it away. And these are all getting repaired, by the way, guys. You had, oh my gosh, if I was Ragnarok. Oh, I'd be so salty. And this is, again, Mara That's really- That's a table punch moment right there. Oh, yeah. So frustrating. He gets away. And you can see now he's starting to realize, oh man, he's trading so efficiently. I almost have to overdo my spores. But then, maybe he doesn't attack you there. Yeah, maybe. A lot more Corruptors added in now, 18, nine Broodlords. Still very heavy on drones, tons of creep spread. Very hard for Mario to truly attack, which I think is, of course, a big part of why we have so many BCs out. He's at nine. I think this is a situation where you really need to get Neural. I agree. I think that is probably the number one thing. Neural, and Fungal as well, of course. Fungal is gonna be amazing here. Uh, but you need to secure kills on BCs or they're just gonna outvalue you forever. Now, once you get to the critical mass of Corruptors, I don't know the exact number, but uh, you can kill BCs before they can teleport. And you definitely want to get there at this point that there's nine out. Yeah, but again, these BCs have paid for themselves in dividends, yes. man. Yes, yes. It's insane. They Look at the bank on Maru. It's so large. Look, he actually gets away immediately. Oh! Oh my god, I what a choked. teleport. What a teleport. And look, he's going to target down every single one, and that's apparently how you deal with... Uh, Brood Lords. And look, he can actually fly over the safety oh, of the it's Thors. So good. Yeah, well, he has to fight here, but the Corruptors. Okay, they pick off a few and decide to turn around. The Thors dealing so much free damage there. That nine is now uh, a six, but six is still a lot of Battle Cruisers doing damage. Takes his base out, and uh, keep in mind that there's not a lot of mining potential left here for Zerk with what he has. And actually getting some lings on top of those Thors, which is super helpful while he continues to pick off the battle cruisers. And I think he's going to end up killing all of them here. So that was about I, that. some good moves from Ragnarok now. I don't know, man. I, I feel like Terran is playing way yeah. too well here. I oh, mean, this is. I definitely agree with that. He's going to finally kill the battle cruisers, but I mean, this has been doing damage the whole time. Mm -hmm. There's still plenty of tanks. I'm sure a ton of lings are going to come out here and try to take a fight. But like, look, they, these patches are almost mined out. Kind of surprised he's even pushed in here. I guess he doesn't care where his supply goes. <laughs> Mario's still with a pretty significant bank, remaxing immediately, getting like every upgrade high sec auto tracking, liberator range, you name it, he's getting it. And even trading these tanks actually really well here. Flyer Carapace 2 is done. But already, Mario's mustered up another army now. It's 135 supply here. That's it, GG. Okay, I was going to say.